looking at number 1, we're multiplying, parenthesis next to parenthesis. So negative 8 times 3, negative 24. And so the negative 8 and 3 we just multiplied, but with the variables, since these are like bases, we can add exponents. Remember, this is a to the first power if nothing's written. So that's a to the 1 plus 4 is 5. It's b to the 7 plus 2. Looking at number 6, again we have multiplication, but you need to be careful. This set of parentheses is raised to the second power. So using the power rule, we'll have to multiply each exponent. Remember, that's 3 to the first power. So again, this 2 will multiply each exponent. 1 times 2. 7 times 2. And 6 times 2. So this is going to give us I've just included this step to be very explicit how we go from 3 to 9. So now I'll bring down what I haven't touched. And now it's back to straightforward multiplication. So 2 times 9. R to the 5 plus 14. T to the 3 plus 12. Looking at number 2, I just want to take a moment to focus on what happens when you have a negative value inside your parentheses. But I just want to emphasize if you get confused in how to apply one of the rules, you might just back up and say, well, what does this mean? Well, what this means is you have two sets of these parentheses. So now I've taken care of this exponent by writing this twice. So you can see we would have negative 5 times negative 5. So to preserve this, I'm just going to come in here, put a set of parentheses with my exponent. So when I use the power rule, multiplying each exponent by 2, I keep up with this negative appropriately. So we would have negative 5, 1 times 2 squared. K, 3 times 2. And M, 7 times 2. So negative 5 squared. And just bring these down. Looking at number 7, this is all multiplication. Nothing's being added or subtracted. It'll be 3 times 2 times negative 5. I'll write this out. And then x squared times x to the 5th times x to the 8th can be written x to the 2 plus 5 plus 8. And likewise, y to the 1st times y to the 6th times y to the 4th is simply y to the 1 plus 6 
plus 4. So 3 times 2 is 6 times negative 5. x to the 7 and 8 is 15. y, 7 and 4 is 11. Looking at number 3, we have addition or subtraction. So as long as we have like terms, we can add or subtract the coefficients. Basically, 9 minus 3 yields 6. And you keep the variables and exponents. These last four problems are quite similar. We're multiplying like bases. So all we do is add the exponents and we keep the bases. So for number four, this is x to the 3 plus 2 plus 8, which yields x to the 10, 13. Now again with 8, the bases are the same. We can just add exponents. So this is 4. 2 plus 6 plus 7 which is 8 and 7 is 15. Looking at number 5, the bases are the same and we're multiplying so we just add exponents. So that's 2 plus 5. To the seventh. Now negative 3 to the seventh is a large number. Most likely if you're given this problem, you'll just be asked to write the answer in exponential notation, which is a fancy way of saying we want to see an exponent you don't have to calculate out this value. Number 9 is very similar, so we'll have negative 3 to the 4 plus 2 which is negative 3 to the 6 but you have to note that this is an even power. Your negative is within the parentheses. So the result would be a positive 3 to the 6th power. Again, this is still in exponential notation, but you know that the answer is positive because you have a negative in parentheses raised to an even power. It's worth taking a moment to point out part of number 7 where the 3, the 2, and the negative 5 we actually just multiplied them together because they are not like bases. With the x's you can add the exponents. With the y's you can add the exponents because the bases are the same. Here we have a 4, a 4, and a 4. So you don't multiply the 4's. You simply add the exponents. You get 4 to the 15th. Now 4 to the 15th is a very large number. So normally directions for a problem like this would say write the answer in exponential notation and you're not expected to calculate out 4 to the 15th power. Looking at number 10 we can simplify this directly. So with 
14 and 21, the GCF is 7. Divide by 7. Divide by 7. With the V's, the 2 is the smaller exponent. So we can cancel this out completely so long as we subtract 2 from 9. And with the W's, we can cancel this out completely so long as we subtract 4 from 10. This will leave us with 3v to the 7th over 2w to the 6th. Looking at number 12, everything in here is to get raised to the third power, but rather than send in this 3 to each exponent, we can clean up what's inside first. So cancel out x squared, so long as you subtract 2 from 10, leave you x to the 8th. With these y's, remember that's y to the 1st, cancel out y to the 1st, subtract 1 from 5, and you get 4. z to the 8th, you're just stuck with it, there's no way to cancel. So we have y to the 4th, x to the 8th, z to the 8th, all raised to the 3rd power. So now we'll use the power rule, that is, multiply 3 times each exponent. So this would give us y to the 12, x to the 24, and z to the 24. Looking at 11, the parentheses only apply to the numerator. So unlike 12, where parentheses applied to the numerator and denominator, that is the entire fraction, we had the option of cleaning things up inside first, then raising everything to the third power as we did down here. With this one, uh, the Q's and the R's cannot interact. We have to take care of the parentheses, everything raised to the second power first. So using the power rule, we'll multiply each exponent by 2. So q to the 6 times 2 is 12, and r to the 7 times 2 is 14. And this is all still over q r to the 19th. Now the q's and the r's can interact. Remember this is q to the first. Cancel that out. If we subtract 1 from 12 and get 11, looking at the 14 and the 19, cancel out r to the 14 so long as we subtract 14 from 19 and we're left with 5. So this gives us q to the 11th r to the fifth. And with 13, I'm not really covering any new ground here. Uh, this puts together a few of the concepts that we've worked on in this video. You might want to pause the video and see if you can simplify this expression on your own. And in a moment I will do it myself. Um, so in this case, since the entire fractions in parentheses, my preference is going to be to clean up what's inside prior to worrying about this exponent. So looking at the 8 and the 20, the greatest common factor is 4. Divide by 4 leaves you with 5. Divide by 4 leaves you with 2. Looking at the x's, remember this is x to the first. I can cancel that out so long as I subtract 1 leaving x to the fourth. 
Looking at the y's, I cancel that out, subtract 2, left with 7. Z's, nothing to cancel, you're just stuck with that. And now we'll take care of this exponent. So remember, each of the three will multiply each exponent. So remember, it's 2 to the first, 5 to the first, z to the first, if nothing's written. And now we'll have to multiply each exponent by 3. So we have 2 to the third, y to the 21st, z to the third, over 5 to the third, x to the 12. And usually we would write these values as 8 and then y to the 21 z to the third 5 to the third is 125 and then x to the 12 If you would like practice with these concepts, so long as you're at my website, you can download a worksheet along with a detailed answer key.